a lot of us are attracted to the sort of darker side of of psychology. Um, I think a lot of us, I mean, it's a it's it's not a a noble instinct, but I think we we like to sort of unpick the the, the bad things that happen in, in our society and in people's lives, and we are fascinated by how people react in extreme situations, in terrifying situations. Um, and certainly that's what, what, I, what I love about it. My name is Paula Hawkins and I'm the author of Into the Water, um, which is my new novel out in May. Um, it is, it's a psychological suspense novel, focuses on two sisters. Um, and what it's about is what happens to you when you discover that the story you've been telling about yourself and your, and your family turns out not to be true. Following the girl on the train was obviously not going to be a simple thing. Um, it was it was a huge book, you know, millions of people bought it. Um, so that that did create a, a kind of a pressure. Um, but what I tried to do is just shut all that out, focus on on, on the things that I thought I did well in, in that book, in, which was, you know, um, creating characters that people really loved and people, well, they might have hated her, but they they wanted to find out about her, they were compelled by her. So I wanted to, to, to recreate that kind of experience and that kind of atmosphere while writing a completely different book in other ways. So it's, um, it's a much wider cast of characters, it's a completely different kind of setting. Um, but I think that the darkness and hopefully the page turning compulsion is all still in there. I've created a huge cast of characters in this in this novel, in Into the Water. I think I might have 15 different viewpoints. So that is daunting. It's daunting from my point of view. It might be daunting to the reader, I hope not. Um, but um, it was an incredibly challenging task. And I actually didn't start out with so many. I started out with the fewer voices and then I kept adding them. Um, and Because I wanted to create this sort of this, this whole community and so the reader can immerse themselves in that community. But I, I did have to, I had a wall of post-its and everyone was in a different colour and they moved around, so it was quite complicated. I wanted to create a place, it's a fictional place, with a dark history. And the, the history I gave it was that it was somewhere where witch hunts happened. There's not a book, book about witches, but witchcraft is, um, occurs um, in some ways. Um, there was some witch hunting in England, mostly in Scotland and the rest of Europe, but it did happen in, in England. And one of the, the ways in which women were tested to see if they were a witch was to take them to the water and see if they could swim or if they sank or swam. Um, so at the, we have this, this is what happened in, in the myth of this, uh, the, this, this village. This is what happened many hundreds of years ago. A young girl was brought here and they, to see if she was a witch and she died there. And ever since this place has built up this kind of, it, it, it has this dark kind of energy about it and people are drawn to it. And this is where all the, 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 the um, sinister things unfold in the novel. Into the Water is very much about how the past comes back to haunt these characters. But it's not in a, in a straightforward way. Um, it's more in the way of the, the past that we remember, the stories that we tell about ourselves, and whether we're actually, how accurate those stories are, how, how much they really reflect reality. Because I think what we all do is we construct narratives around our lives um, to make sense of our lives. And those histories may not always be completely true. And I think that's the fascinating thing, is the stories that we tell. So our, our pasts come back in all sorts of different weird ways to affect our, our, our current state. 